Talking. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Good to uh, good to see the uh, responses. Um, I want to begin tonight by saying I know we had a powerful prayer uh, connection uh, earlier, and um, I was not able to get on the uh, call, but I know that uh, it was a, a powerful time in God. And uh, we thank God for Reverend Hamilton. We thank God for Reverend Parks and, and all of you who were a part of that effort. Uh, we have God great praise. Um, we want to, uh, by way of announcements, um, just kind of let you know that we are, uh, we're going to be live streaming again this Sunday. Um, pretty much the same format that we had last week. And we pray that um, last week's um, um, broadcast uh, was a blessing to you. And uh, we're going to be coming back on it again, same time uh, this coming Sunday. Um, what we want to do is uh, those of you who um, kind of want to set it up tonight to where if you have questions or uh, anything like that, uh, as we go through our um our message tonight, uh, please go ahead and type those in. I see uh, Sister Trunda, uh, Sister Jackson, um, Sister uh, Reverend Smith, uh, and uh, all of you have uh, joined in. And uh, so if you have some deals, uh, some questions that you would like to ask tonight, please feel free to do that. Um, uh, Reverend Cross, Sister Long, um, Sister Manigo, uh, good to good to hear from you guys. Um, I want to, you know, I know you, Sister Pettis, how you doing? I know that you guys have been hit with a lot of things concerning um, the uh, situation that we're all in, uh, dealing with the coronavirus and shelter and uh, all the type of sanctions that they have uh, uh, put on us. Uh, so I. I didn't want to go uh, and bombard you tonight with additional uh, things concerning that. Hey, sis, uh, but I, I did want to uh, kind of jump right back into our our um, teaching on spiritual clarity. Um, I know we were talking about fasting, uh, but we kind of want to kind of just recap uh, our last point on that and then go into go into something else concerning um, the uh, seeing God, uh, seeing yourself the way God, the way God sees you. And um, uh, so if you will, if, if you will go now, uh, this is about fasting, but if you will, if you'll go to Matthew 4. Uh, verses 1 through 11, and um, now this this is where, now you'll also find this in Luke 4 as well, um, this is the uh, Synoptic Gospel, so you'll be able to find this also, um, hey Sister Cooper, uh, you'll be able to find this also in Luke 4, um, it, it is about the temptation and of, of Christ. And what we see in this is that um, when we talk about spiritual clarity, um, you know, uh, fasting is part of what we can do in order to have spiritual clarity. And so in this, uh, we see that the spiritual cl clarity is to seek strength to overcome temptation and dedication to God. Um, and I believe that that is very, very important in this season that we're going through right now, um, being able to seek strength to overcome temptation and dedication to God. There, there, there are so many things out there right now, so many conspiracy theories, so many um, uh, so-called prophecies out there right now uh, concerning what we're going through right now. But my question is, is it the voice of God? Is it, is it God or is it what we are and we being uh, people in general, or is it what we think? Okay. Uh, and so when we, when we look at spiritual clarity, uh, we want to know what what's God saying? What's God doing in the season? And so to be able to resist the temptation 
that will come, uh, we have to really dedicate ourselves to hearing the voice of God. And it's right here in, in Matthew uh, 4. It says, then was Jesus led up to the uh, led up by of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, in this one, we see a direct challenge uh, to the personality of Christ. And, 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 you know, it said, if you, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. The, the enemy understood the power uh, that was attached to him, but he still did not understand that Christ was who he knew had the power. And I want to relate that to you and I in the fact that, you know, the enemy knows who we are in God or what we have in God, but the enemy does not really, really understand who we are in God. And so the the, the challenge, and a lot of times the challenges in our life has to deal with the fact that, you know, he's he's trying to he's trying to to see who you really are. And and in any temptation, the enemy is trying to see who you really are. You know, we can talk a good game, we can we can put on a facade, we can do all of those things, but when it really counts, who are we? You know, somebody said the character uh is who we are when nobody's looking. And the enemy wants to know that, okay? And so a lot of times when we are going through temptations and when we're going through uh, challenges just as we are right now, you know, this is how you find out who you really are, okay? This is, this is how you find out who you really are in God. And so the, 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 the enemy is saying, if you are the son of God, and I wanna, I wanna put this question out there to you. Um, you know, have you ever had to deal with an if concerning your identity in Christ? If you are a preacher, if you are a man of God, if you are a woman of God, if you are a child of God, those challenges come to dim your identity or to dim your view on yourself. He said, now, he said, so if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So now here's a challenge uh, to the deity of God by, by saying, okay, so you command that these stones be made. So prove it to me. But notice what Jesus said. He said, it is written. We have to really understand what he means here. He says, it's written. Our identity is locked into who God says we are. That's that's where our real identity is. It's locked into who God says. He said, man shall not live, it is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The word that God has spoken over your life to identify who you are, that word that, that gave revelation uh, to your purpose in your life, that word that, that actually transformed your life, that word that God spoke over your life that made the transition that you of who you are right now in God, that's the word that we must constantly, that we must constantly stand on. No matter what situation we're going through, no matter what type of situation we find ourselves in, we have to constantly, constantly declare the word of God over our life. You know, uh, a lot of times we we declare what people say we are. We declare um, basically uh, people's thoughts and their opinions about us. But None of that really matters in the grand scheme of things. It's all about who God says we are. And he says, it's written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, John tells us that Jesus is that word. Okay. And so with, with Jesus being that word, he's saying, he's saying that, that, that our life 
is in the word. Jesus being that word, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the uh, life of um, mouth of God. That's where our life is. That's where our life is. That's where our strength is. That's where our deliverance is. That's where our salvation is. That's where we are as children of God. We are identified by the word of God. And the word of God is what he says that we are. And okay, so the temptation did not cease there. Okay, he said, then the devil taking him up into a holy city, set at him on a pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. Again, here's another challenge. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now, here again, the, the, the enemy is challenging the identity of Christ if thou be the son of God, okay? So prove it again, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge to a concerning thee, then that's God. God shall give God's angels charge concerning you, okay? And their hands, they shall bear these up, lest at any time thy foot shall uh, dash against a stone. Basically what he's saying is, if you are uh, the son of God, that if you jump off the pinnacle of the uh, temple, okay, and, and, and you, you got to kind of get in your mind that um, in, in, in that time, the pinnacle of the temple was very, very high. And we're talking about the highest point of the temple. Uh, and if you can imagine those, those temples back then, they, they had that very, very high steep um, uh, I'm not going to call it a, a steeple, but it was a uh, very, very high point uh, in the uh, design of the temple. And he said, if you if you cast yourself down from that, OK, that God, that God, it is written. So he kind of comes back. He says um, uh, that God is going to set charge angels to stop you from falling to your death or falling to injury. Now, um, he said that's written, okay? And, and you know, we can really gain strength from that because even the enemy knows that God is going to protect us even in the most trying of times, even in the most uh, uh, tryings of situations, uh, that God is going to protect us. He's going to give us charge because uh, even the enemy knows that if I come against him too much, that God is going, even if I can tempt you to getting out of the will of God, even if I can do something that's going to cause you to do, to do something that God completely does not want you to do, that um, God is still going to protect you. God is still going to stop your destruction. And God, you know, the Bible says he, he may allow us to go a certain point, but he will not let us ultimately fall. And so the, even the enemy knows that. And, and so then Jesus answered and he says, he says, again, it is written, Okay, again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Notice, notice he said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And basically what he was saying, um, you know, thou shalt not tempt my father. Thou shalt not, his word is true. His word is just. He's going to do what he said. And don't tempt him because he will do it. I find joy in that. Because anytime the enemy comes in against you and the enemy is telling you that, okay, you know, um, the word says this, but I'm going to challenge you to believe that word, to have faith in that word and to trust that word. And that's where we have to be. That's where we have to always have our trust in God, because it's, it's, it's God that's 
is the one that is going to stop whatever it is that the enemy is tempting us or challenging us with. It's God that's going to stop it. It's God that's going to protect us. It's God, and 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 I want to tell somebody uh, that is that's tuning in tonight. You know, whatever you're going through right now, the it is written that God is going to protect you. You know, angels are real. The power of God is real. The sovereignty of God is real. Uh, uh, the protection of God is real. I, I can't. I can't tell you how many times that I can testify that the 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 enemy tried to come against me, or the enemy tried to 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 get me to step out of the will of God do a challenge, but it was God, even if I took the challenge, it was God that protected me. And I believe I'm not the only one. I believe that some of you can say amen to that because it was God that protected you. So that word is true, but the enemy is trying to get you to um, go outside of that word. And so Jesus is really telling the enemy that you got to be careful about tempting God because the Bible says no man or, 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 or no spirit is, is able to tempt God into, into doing something against his own will. The Bible says this, that heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or one tittle of my word shall fail. And so in the will of God, that that's where our strength is, that word is not going to fail us. No matter what the enemy tries, no matter what the enemy does, that that word is not going to fail us. And so really, Jesus is saying, hey, don't tempt him because my life is 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 basically embedded in him. And so when you think you're you're challenging me, you're actually challenging the word that I stand on. And y'all, I'm telling y'all, that is that is that is good gospel news right there. That when and, and this is why uh the 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 old testament writer says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, it's the spirit of the Lord that shall lift up a standard against him. The standard is the word of God. And 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 and, and notice this that the spirit does not activate or the spirit does not move without the word. And so if the word, does the spirit lift up the standard of the word because the word is there to protect us and the word is there for, to give us strength even in the time of weakness. He said, again, the devil. Now, I want you to notice here something um, for those of you who, who feel like that the enemy is just gonna challenge you one time and leave you alone. Notice in this in this passage again the devil came again the devil came how many of you have ever ever um you know had a a period or a season in your life that it seemed like every time you turned around the enemy was coming at you with something okay um you get you get done here and 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 you got done with that situation and that circumstance and you think okay now I can take a breather. Now I can move on with my life. And then boom, here he comes again. Okay. You get that taken care of. You think now I can go forward. Up oh, here he comes again. Okay. And so we got to understand that the enemy is going to continually to try to, to come against us in a way to get us out of the will of God, to cause us uh, to lose our focus and our sight on God. And he says, now, um, he, he, again, the devil taketh him up an exceeding high mountain, showing him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And then he said to, to Jesus, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Notice, okay, he tried to get him first. OK, by 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 challenging uh, his place in God. Then he tried to get him by challenging the power of God in his life. And then and now he's trying to get him by uh, uh, testing his integrity and his character. And he's saying, you know, all of this stuff, all of this stuff I will give to you if you would worship me. That's not a good deal. 
That's not a good deal. And a, a lot of times people, uh, people will give themselves over to what the enemy offers and exchange their godly integrity for what the enemy is offering. And, 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 and that's not a good deal. OK, because any time that um, that you have to worship something in order to 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 have what uh, actually I'm going to be honest with you to have what's already yours. OK, because we are the heirs of Christ. We are the sons of God. OK, and so that's all that already belongs to us. And so the enemy will, will come and try to tempt you to say, I'll give you what's yours. That doesn't even sound right. Okay. And so what, what, what Jesus said to him was, you know, because it was all about Jesus's, Jesus relinquishing his position and worship. Because anytime that you worship anybody or anything beside God, you relinquish your position as a child of God. This is why he says, don't, don't worship idols. Don't worship uh, any other God beside me, because anytime you're going to lose your position in your relationship with him. And so Jesus said this, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship. Jesus establishes or reestablishes his position in the eyes of the enemy, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. And notice verse 11. Then, then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The devil left, the angels came in and ministered unto him, and he ministered to his needs. You know, uh, when we first start reading this passage, it said he was hungry. So the angels come and start to minister not only uh, to his physical needs, but also to his uh, spiritual needs. Well, that tells us uh, we need to be able to see that anytime that the enemy comes in to tempt us on any level, that there is a word for our victory. And I believe that in this season, in this season that we're going through right now, that we need to stand on the word and then we'll be able to clear, see clearly what what not only what the enemy's involvement is but we'll be able to see clearly god's hand god's presence and god's power working in our lives okay so uh when we talk about spiritual clarity we're talking about the purpose of of fasting um uh, uh, to seek strength to overcome temptation dedication to god so, so basically, that's that is a denying of oneself in the flesh, in order that we may be stronger in the spirit. Because your, let's be honest, your temptation is really it may be of the flesh, but the real temptation is to pull your spirit away from God. And that's where we have to be strengthened in the inner man so that we may be able to resist what the enemy is really trying to do. And so when Jesus uh, uh, reestablished himself is um, in the word of God to say, hey, look, we're only going to I'm, I'm only going to worship God. OK, and him only shall I serve. Not only am I worshiping God and I'm, I'm seeing his worth, I'm seeing his, his, his significance in my life. Not only am I doing that, but I'm also serving him because now I can see clearly the fact that it's in him that I live, it's in him that I move, and it's in him that I have my being. Once that was established, notice verse 11, once that was established, the devil leave left him okay the devil left him because notice what, what what james also says that if we resist the devil okay he will flee and what i want to encourage us tonight is to do is that fasting will help you resist that devil because sometimes we we get weak in our flesh and we give over 
from the flesh perspective, we give over to the enemy. Now, when you do that, what you're allowing is you're allowing a portal through the flesh because the enemy really is a, a attacking your spirit. And so by yielding to that, we now are opening a portal to the spirit. God says, close the portal. Close the portal. Okay. Let let my word close the portal and 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 be strengthened by my word. And now you will have the power to resist. I, I, I have a lot of people say, you know, man, the uh, temptation was just too strong. Okay. The temptation was just too strong. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't overcome it. And you're exactly right. Not in your own strength. But when you stand on the word of God, not not your word, not your not your not your promise that you made to yourself. But when you stand on the word of God, that's where the strength of because now that word strengthens your inner man. And then you are then able to resist. Now. To achieve this, uh, to to achieve this spiritual clarity, you know, uh, we got to get close to God, and we got to maintain that. Um, our, 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 a consistent prayer life is important. Okay, rebuking the spirit of doubt, surrounding yourself with spiritually minded people, seeing things the way they really are, and and, and one of the things that that we are seeing in this season is that. Um, um, God is revealing some things. I, I was, I was, I was sharing with uh, some dear people on last night that I am asking God, uh, God, what is your purpose in this season? Because I do know this about God: God does not do anything without having a purpose. When He created the world, it was for a certain purpose. When he when he saved you, there was a purpose attached to that. When he delivered you, there was a purpose attached to that. What he allows and 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 what he protects us against is all has a purpose in it. So I've been asking God, okay, God, what is your purpose in all of this? Because it seems like all of this stuff happened out of nowhere. And I do know this other thing about God. God is never surprised about anything that happens. So cannot be Alpha and Omega and be surprised by what comes in between Alpha and Omega. So God already knows. God already has a, has a purpose for allowing this. So that's what we need to do is we need to seek God so that God can reveal to us what his divine purpose is into this. You know what? Bump all of the theories, bump all of the stuff that doesn't agree with the word of God and seek God about what his divine purpose is uh, in this season. And then you got to humble your perspective of your opinion and embrace God. That's how you achieve spiritual clarity. Um, I can't, because sometimes my vision, okay, will argue with God's revelation. I see it one way. I'm, I'm not willing to bend on that. And God's trying to reveal to us exactly what is going on in our lives. God's trying to reveal to us some things about ourselves that we need to get under the blood. But when we won't humble our perspective to God, that's when we start to see ourselves. Things get cloudy. Things get confusing. Things get, things get really, 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 uh, um, um, puzzling in our, in our in our spirit and in our mind because of the fact that our perspective is winning in our lives over God's revelation. And we have to humble that. We have to um, humble that perspective. It, it, it was it was very interesting that 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 the, the prophet prayed that his servant would see what he was seeing. Now, what he was seeing was what was God was showing. But notice that the servant, as long as the servant was not humbling his perspective to the reality of what God was showing, he was in stress, he was in fear, he was in doubt, he was wondering, you know, what's going to happen to me? 
what's going to happen to us. But the prophet being able to see what God was doing in that particular uh, episode in his life, he was at peace. He, he, he was, he was, he was seeing clearly. He was at peace. He, he was in confidence. He was in assurance that, that the God I serve is, is, is going to bring me through this because he could see that what God was showing him was, is that the enemy that you are, that, that, that is trying to bring fear into your life, that enemy, I'm already over that. I'm already covering that enemy right now in your life. And the only reason why that enemy hadn't really taken you out, because notice what the scripture is talking about. They surrounded him, but they didn't attack him. They surrounded him, but they didn't attack him. And the reason why they didn't attack him is because they could not move. They could not, that the enemy could not move on anything that God said that God is protecting. And this is why, you know, David picked it up. He said, God will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. Okay. In the presence of your enemy, God will prepare a table for you. And so what we have to understand here is that by humbling our perspective, okay, our own opinion of our own vision, embracing the vision of God, that will settle a lot of issues in our lives. That will settle a lot of complexity in our lives. So it, it, it is really all about seeing ourselves the way that God sees us. So I'm going to ask you to go to Ephesians 1, um, very, very powerful uh, passage of scripture where uh, Paul is actually saying that uh, he really, 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 really needs to pray for uh, the people uh, because he could see, he could see God's power and he could see uh, what God was going to do in their lives. And I want to ask you, can, can you really see uh, who you are in God? Can you really see what God is wanting to do and what God is doing um, in, in this season, in your life? You know, uh, you know, we we go through different stages and we go through different ages in our life. But 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 just notice that uh, for every stage and for every age that we go to in our lives is that God is trying to show us something. God is trying to show us something about ourselves. God is trying to show us where he wants to take us. And God is trying to tell us that uh, I see you totally different than the way you see yourself. Totally different. And so in Ephesians 1, um, uh, it, it, it's, just, it's just full of, of, of just uh, um, a whole different uh, perspective. Okay. And I want to, I want to, I want to deal with uh, the verses, um, verses one through, um, actually verses um, three, uh, starting with verse three, uh, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And so what Paul is saying is, is that every blessing, spiritual blessing, God, even before Christ came to the planet, even before we came to the planet, God put all of those blessings in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with our spiritual blessings in heavenly places, but he put it in Christ. And that's why it's, it's so very, very important that, that we take the eyes of Christ and we let and we let Christ through his word and that's the word right Christ being the word let the word reveal unto us who we really are 
And so here's what the word is saying. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay, so that God says, okay, he see that I wanna manifest in your life. I want you to be holy and without blame. Mm. I want you to be holy and I want you to be without blame. That's God's will for your life. But notice now, he said, I chose you. I have chosen you, okay? Not once you got here, not to see what you were gonna get into. I, I did all of that before you ever made one mistake in your life. I chose you. I chose you to be the righteousness of God on the earth. I chose you to be holy and without blame before him, Christ, in love, before God, I'm sorry, before God in love, okay? So so it was going to take the love of God in order, he chose us out of love. And and, and oh my God, I wish I could see you right now uh, because I, I'm, I want you to, I wanna see that, that, that you're really getting this that he chose you out of love. He didn't choose you out of talent. He didn't choose you out of your, your gift. He didn't choose you uh, out of your ability or your capability, but he chose you out of love. Can I just tell you that, 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 that not only did he choose you out of love, he sustains you out of love. Because if you've ever, if you've ever messed up, if you've ever done something that was out of the will of God, if you've ever uh, um, uh, walked away or, or went astray from uh, uh, the, the word of God, and now that you're back, let me tell you, it was no uh, nothing else but the love of God that, that, that brought you back. The love of God not only drew you back, but the love of God drew God to you, okay? Uh, the Bible says, even, even when we were uh, uh, dead in trespasses and sin, God loved us. Wow, that's powerful because for human beings, uh, we, we always look at love as something that, um, that you know, if I love you, I expect you to love me back or vice versa. And we are seldom, we, we seldom embrace the principle of love when we're being hurt by somebody. We seldom embrace the principle of love when something tragic happens in our life. But he's saying that this love went beyond our circumstances. This love went beyond our situation, our faults, our failures, our shortcomings. This love went beyond that. And so, because he looks at us based on, now he, now let me, let me back up. He looks at us out of the eyes of love in a desire for us to become who he has sanctioned us before the foundations of the world. Wow, that is powerful. That is powerful. He says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Okay, so now he's going all the way back to when we fail. He says, having predestined us until the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. So Paul is saying, okay, look, so we were dead in trespasses and sin because our father and our mother, Adam and Eve, fell in the garden, okay? And so therefore we were born with the seed of sin in our members, okay? So he said, but because he had predestined us, he adopted us. Wow, he adopted us through the redemptive act of Jesus Christ. So he adopted us through Christ. He adopted us, 
Okay. And, 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 and I don't know about you, but, 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 but he adopted us into his family because sin separated us from him. But God says, okay, I'm going to go back and adopt you. I created you. I loved you from the foundations of the, of, of the, of, of the world. I, I, I did all of these things. I haven't changed my mind about you. And that's one thing I want you to understand. And, 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 and that, that man, that woman that's going through, uh, condemnation right now. And you're feeling like and you're thinking that God has, has abandoned you and God doesn't care about you. Listen, there is nothing you can do. Nothing you can do that is going to stop God from loving you. Okay. And so, uh, so whatever it means that he has to create in order to have that relationship with you, he'll do it. So, so what God did, he adopted us by Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ, actually what it should say through Jesus Christ to himself. So I'm going to use my son to come get you. I'm going to use my son to, to pay the ransom for you. I'm going to use my son. Now, listen, what I want you to see out of that is you are valuable. You are valuable. You, you, you are so valuable to God that God will send his son to adopt you back into the family. You are valuable to God. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not valuable. Because, you know, uh, people put value on, on, on people and they put value on things based on a certain set of criteria. But have you ever thought about that, you know, uh, we want to be valued by, by people in our lives. But have you ever thought about the fact that if people don't value you, they, they don't even come a close second to God not even a close second to God. And I want to and I want I want to talk to that 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 man or that woman who who feels uh that 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 you have no value because of the things that you've been through in your life, the things the things you've experienced in your life, uh uh, uh the mistakes you made, the failures you have you have experienced in your life. No, your value didn't change in the eyes of God. Your value changed in your eyes may change in your family's eyes, your value may have changed in maybe friends or something like that eyes in your social circle. But in heaven, in God's, God always sees us the way he intends us, intends for us to be. And this is why he, he's not the God of a second chance. He's the God uh, of another chance because he, 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 he's always looking at us through those loving eyes. He said, according to the good pleasure of his will. Well, he told us what the good pleasure of his will was in verse four, that we should be holy and without our blame before him in love. That's the pleasure of his good will. Okay. And then he says, to the praise of the glory of his grace. My God. Um, um, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you guys when growing up in the church, um, I used, to, I used to really discount grace because I, I heard about it. I, I know you guys heard the song. Of how sweet to sound saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now i found uh i, I once was blind but now i see and so i, I heard it so much that i just kind of discounted it okay until i grew in god and once i grew in god um i i, I come to understand that it's by grace that he sees us he sees us through the eyes of grace because uh, uh, if he didn't see us to eye, through the eyes of grace, okay, grace, um, uh, grace being that 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 unmerited favor of God, because um, without grace we would have to earn His love. Without grace we would have to earn His His um, His His passion for us. And 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 I don't know about you, but I I, I can't. There, there, there's nothing in me, and I don't believe there's nothing in anybody uh, that is strong enough to earn the grace of God. So that grace has to be given as a gift. 
okay? And he said, to the praise of the glory of his grace. And y'all, listen, I, if, if I was with y'all tonight, I'd tell you to high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you're the glory of his grace. You're the glory of his grace. You, you, are, you are the manifestation of the grace of God. If you're saved, if you're filled with the spirit of God, if you're walking in the power of God, if God is using you and God is, 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 is having his way in your life and you are totally surrendered to God, you are the glory. Okay, the glory is the true essence of a thing. The glory is the true essence of a thing. And so when when we are walking in the grace of God and we are walking and, and doing those things through grace that empowers us to do it, listen, that's the praise of glory. That's the, the praise comes because now you're walking in the true essence of your creation. Okay, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. He has accepted us because of grace. He's accepted us because of grace. He's accepted us because of grace. I, I, can't, I can't say it enough because the only way we did not do anything, and come, come on y'all, let's be honest with ourselves. Um, we have done nothing to deserve the grace of God. Absolutely nothing, nothing. And you say, well, pastor, I've, I've, I've brought a lot of people to Christ. Okay, well, that's good. But you did it by the grace of God. But, but, but pastor, I've, 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 I've served God and I, I've, I've, I've spoke his word and I, I've done things that, that are, are, are pleasing in the sight of God. You've done it by the grace of God. Okay, there, the, there, there, is, there is nothing that we could earn receive his grace. And he said, he's made us accepted in the beloved because of the grace of God, because of the power of God. Now, he says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Man, I wish I was with y'all tonight. I tell y'all, hey, high five your neighbor, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor the blood works. The blood works because it is through his blood that we were redeemed. And you know what the word redeemed means? That means to be bought back, to be bought back. The blood paid the ransom, but it also, it paid the ransom for sin, but it also gave us life in him. So he had redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. My God, the blood works, the blood works. Because when, when, when God looks at us, he doesn't see sin, he sees the blood. Oh, now, now, now listen, uh, that's, that, that's a Sunday school lesson <laughs> that, that has stayed with me all my life. When he sees us, now, notice in the Old Testament, he says, now, now when I see the blood, he t in, 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 in the Old Testament, he said, now I want you to sprinkle the blood over the doorposts of your house so that when death comes, he said, when, when, he, when, when he sees the blood, he'll pass over. Wow, my God. Because in, 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 in the book of Leviticus, we see that it's the blood that gives life. And can I, and can I add something? It's the blood that protects life. Because he said that when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over. Okay, so how does that relate to how God sees us? God says, I cover you in blood so that my eyes will never be tainted by anything you do. It will never be tainted. My mind will not change because every time I see you, I'm going to see my blood. I'm going to see the life that 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 I predestined uh, for you before the foundations of the world uh, were ever laid. I'm going to see you. And even though you may not be what I created you to be yet. But I, when I see the blood, I see our grace has me uh, to not judge you prematurely, but to see you finished in me. 
Y'all listen, I, I really need you to understand that the blood works through the, his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Okay, you listen, it's the riches of his grace that has brought us to uh, a place in his eyesight that he really, really loves looking at you. Do me a favor and just and just uh, um, um, just online high five your neighbor and say, you know, God loves looking at me. God loves looking at me. He loves seeing me. He he loves he he loves what he sees not only, but he loves what he sees in me. He loves. Oh my God! This is why the scripture says this: Greater is He that is in you that's in the world. Now, let me just go a little step with that. So he says, I love looking into you because I see perfection. Because this is why, this is why, this is why Jesus said, let your light so shine. That light does not shine from the outside. That light shines from the inside so that men may see your good works because your works or a re your, your your works are a result of God being on the inside of you that they may see your good works but glorify glorify father because that's where it came from okay so 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 you're so valuable to God now no, notice look at creation God has never inhabited any of his creatures but man Never, it, listen, the enemy went to an animal, not God. God poured himself into you. Oh my God, you gotta be valuable for God to pour himself into you. For the beginning, according to the scripture, wherein he has, he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Oh my God, do me another favor and just tell somebody in your house that um I, I'm I'm complex. Yeah, I, I'm I'm complex because because you don't know what his will is for my life. Okay. It's a mystery. But the reason why it's a mystery because there will be a manifestation. It's a mystery right now who we are going to be. The Bible says this, we, we don't know, okay, what we shall be, okay? But uh, uh, it's, it's a mystery right now, but there is a manifestation that is coming. And that manifestation is not going to come in a one-time thing. That manifestation is, is slowly being you are being slowly manifested the real you is being slowly manifested in your everyday life every time in, in in situations and circumstances god is showing you who you really are and and listen if i was to testify tonight i i would just tell you that that there's a lot of things that i didn't even know about myself i didn't even know god had put it in me I was in a situation that God, that it was, it was, it was relevant for God to pull it out of me. And if that makes sense to anybody, because here's the deal, here's the deal. The anointing does not come just without a pressing. Okay. So the, the, the pressing actually pushes out the anointed, you know the anointed under pressure. You know the anointed under pressure, okay? And so, and, and, and so God is saying, the mystery of my will, okay, is manifested through your situation to my good pleasure, okay? Which he has purpose in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, no, wait a minute, he didn't say the dispensation of the fullness of time, he said, but in the disposition of the fullness of times, plural, that he might gather together in all things in Christ, which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And, and, and can I tell you that, that even in this time, 
okay? Even in this time that we're going through right now, okay? God is gathering together those that are his. And, you know, I had a chance to talk to uh, some, 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 some powerful people of God uh, uh, over the period of this, of this uh, uh, shelter, over the period of this whole corona thing, coronavirus thing. And, and listen, let me tell you, um, you can see the peace in them. You can see the power exuding from them. You, you can see the confidence that they have in God. And, and 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 even when they opened their mouth to speak, they were not speaking um, uh, doom and gloom. They were speaking power, power that God was going to bring through, uh, bring us through. They they were speaking these things because they see, they see what God is going to do in their lives and in the lives of people. Okay, and and so that are his, and so by seeing that, can I tell you that when you got clarity, when 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 you got clarity, things become clear to you. The the enemy wants to keep you in a in a in a fog. The enemy wants to keep you confused. He wants to keep you in a way that you cannot see clearly. Because uh, let's face it, when we when we don't see clearly, we 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 bump into stuff. Okay, we we don't we don't keep the path that we need to keep. How many of you have ever got up in the middle of the night? You you couldn't see where you're going. First thing you know, you done bumped into something, and now you done caused it. Now that causes you pain. Uh, that 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 causes you uh, all kind of things. But 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 what God is saying, He said, look. Uh, in, in, in Ephesians 1, he said, I want I want you to see yourself the way God sees you. God doesn't see you as a failure. God doesn't see you as, as, as a mistake. God doesn't see you as, as things that maybe people have told you you are, or, or maybe people have, have tried to put their perspective on your life. He sees you as his son. He sees he sees you as worth redeeming. And that's what I want to believe with you tonight. You were worth him redeeming you. And so this this whole lesson tonight is being about you seeing your worth. Listen, it, it don't matter if Will and Lee don't see your worth. It doesn't matter if if if, if this other person doesn't see your worth. It's God, it's God that sees your worth. And, and, and listen, and, and, and let me just drop this on you. And when you see his worth, you worship. Man, oh my God, that is a key element of your relationship with God. And that is to worship him, to worship him. I live to, I love that song by Israel. I'll live to worship him because he sees my worth. I see his worth. He says, I'm worthy to be redeemed. And I'm saying, and I'm saying back to him in worship that 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 that, that you are worthy to be my redeemer. You're worthy to be uh, my savior. You are so worthy. Can't nobody do me. Oh, that's what that's the way we used to say it in the old church. Can't nobody see me like he does and does the things that he does for my life. Listen, God is an awesome God. Um, I'm 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 looking at my time uh, and I'm 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 almost out of time. But listen, I I I, I want you to go away from tonight that you matter to God. You matter so much to God. And before we get out tonight, I want to pray, but I want to ask you to be praying for our dear sister, Sister Rhonda Cooper. Please, my brothers and my sisters, please be praying for Sister Rhonda. Okay, she's she's going through some things right now with the loss of her mom today. And, and please, let's, let's pray for her. And let's pray for each other. 
you know, this is a this is a trying time uh, for a lot of people, uh, especially with the new sanctions that they have put on. But you know what? What the devil meant for your bad, God has a way because you value you're valuable to Him. God has a way of turning out for your good. Let's pray, Father. We give you glory. We honor you, Father God, because you alone, uh, God. We thank you for being our redeemer, for being our creator, for being, Father God, everything that you are to us. Father God, we have life outside of you because anything outside of you, Father God, is fake, is phony. But God, you are the one that really, truly loves us. And we thank you for it. Thank you for the people that you place in our life with your love in them that love us, God. And Lord, we're asking right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you would touch our dear sister, Sister Rhonda, and her family, Father. Lord, I pray in this difficult time, I pray, Father God, that you would love her. Manifest yourself. Manifest the love that you have for her and her family, Father God, even in this time of sorrow and bereavement. Father God, we believe you, Father God, to bring her through. We believe you to bring her, Father God, forward. Lord, I thank you that you dry our weeping eyes. And Father God, you are a God that's touched by the feelings of our infirmity. So Father, I pray for healing. I pray for wholeness, Father. Lord, and I pray for your comfort through the grace that is yours and yours alone. And Lord, I pray that you bless everybody that is on this feed that has a need, Father, as they release their needs to you. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you would be God, that you would be God, the Jehovah Jireh, the God that's able to provide all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Father, we thank you, Father God, and we declare and decree, Father, we're, we are coming out of this time. Father God, we're coming out of this time with power. We're coming out of this time with, with a new perspective. We're coming out of this time with more grace. We're coming out of this time with more anointing, God. Thank you for what you're doing. For we declare that what the enemy meant for our bad, we have a God that that is able to turn it for our good. Father, bless everybody on this feed. And even those that had a desire to be on the feed and could not get in for some reason, Father, I pray that you will bless them, Father God. And we thank you in advance for what you're doing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Listen, the Bundle Love Fellowship, I love y'all with everything I have in me. And there is no shelter that's going to be able to keep me away from you. God bless you. And, and, and look, I am looking for the day. And I am really anticipating the day that we can see each other again, hold each other in an embrace, in a godly embrace, and and just love on each other. I don't know. The next time, as uh, soon as this thing is over, we might just have an embracing service. I, I don't. But I just thank God for you. God bless you, and may God keep you. Okay.